We are about to build you disrupt and our keynote speaker, Tatiana Zander, Director of Technology Innovation at Ericsson, who is responsible for innovation and thought leadership across Ericsson North America. She drives and streamlines innovation and lab strategy across all operator and enterprise customers while always looking for the next disruption. In this keynote session, Tatiana presents facts about women in technology today and she will talk through situations and strategies to be successful in creating an environment that is not about your gender, but about you. And we'll share how adapting a growth mindset from day to day into a work environment will help overcome professional challenges. We welcome Tatiana and the Iron Woman Mindset. The stage is yours, Tatiana. Hi, everyone. This is Tatiana Zander. I am Director of Technology Innovation at Ericsson. And today I want to present to you about the Iron Woman mindset. What does it mean and how do you get it too? Because I think everyone can, and this will lead to more female powerful leaders in technology. So let me share my screen. Okay. So basically let, let's start off before i dive into a little bit of like the stories of um what what drives this mindset and what makes us better leaders or women in tech i mean everyone is a leader for themselves but i'm i'm looking at of course like any type of, of job family and job domain um, in technology and honestly outside of technology as well but let me uh, there you go. Uh, let me share a little bit about myself first. So you know who you're talking to. And of course, at the end of the session, I, I'd love to discuss with you. Um, yeah, so I, I work um, directly for the chief technology office here at Ericsson North America. Um, what that means is <laughs> roughly uh, basically working with innovation, creating thought leadership and driving thought leadership proof of concepts. Um, I, I work and coordinate some of the labs. Um, one of the big things is to find the next disruption and provide strategic guidance in how to obtain that. Like all of that for North America, of course, working also with global. I've been with Ericsson my professional, entire professional career, which is like 12 years now. Um, and I started as a software developer. So I started um, right, right out of school and basically coding for probably seven or so years. I was doing also system integration, technical sales support, all kinds of things. I, I was fortunate enough to work with every business area that there is because I was always curious and I wanted to like find out, okay, what is it? Because telecommunication is just quite a, a handful to, to grasp. Um, and, and it takes a while, of course. Uh, one of the opportunities actually given in that context was um, I did this global talent program, the early career program at Ericsson. And if you ever get a chance to sign up to any kind of rotation program within your company um, or a talent development program, the best thing I ever did, <laughs> honestly. I learned, um, of course, like you network and so on, but I got to know some of my, my peers there um so so well we are friends up until this day so it is really it, it has um made my life better for it so i'm really i'm really glad for this opportunity and um all the experience that came out of it um a little bit on the cultural side uh, i was born in russia i was raised in germany i worked on all kinds of different assignments um in four continents and counting which because of and today i live in in um, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area in California. Um, academically, my background is a Bachelor of Science in scientific programming. Um, and then I have two master's degree. One is of science in operations research and another one, I just finished that recently, is an executive master of business administration. Um, some some other stuff maybe that, that explains a little bit how the title of the session came along. I mean, I used to be a competitive gymnast. I did all kinds of sports in my life um, because I, I enjoy, and I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, I enjoy challenges and trying on new stuff. Um, but I'm I'm an almost Ironman, <laughs> Iron Woman. Um, let me share you what happened there. 
So, and, and how this, this session title came to life. So I was signed up to an Ironman, Ironman California. Um, as of this day, it's probably one, one month ago that was supposed to happen. And I trade for it so, so much, thousands and thousands of miles on my bike, running, swimming, everything. Um, a lot of logistics that went into it, a lot of, a lot of, um, strategy that went into it, stressing, of course, my peers, family and, and everyone supporting me, um, going there on the day, um, and traveling there, doing all the check-ins, checking in my gear, driving myself crazy, not sleeping for days before, of course, uh, because you, you get kind of freaked out by, by such a huge thing. It was my first one. Um, and of course, in the end, I realized I, um, picked the day of a historic storm for the Iron Man. Uh, there was a bomb cyclone in over California and there was a category five atmospheric river and we didn't know there would be canceled. It was canceled on the day of one hour before the event. I was in the car it, wearing my wetsuit outside, seeing how like the world is ending uh, the down for me, super stressed, but still ready. They are not canceling. I'm jumping into that water. I'm going to do this triathlon. And then they canceled it. And it was, it was a relief at that point, of course. Um, but what I take away from it is the Iron Woman mindset, because it is something that I, I never thought I could do. I know I never thought I could do it. As a kid, I saw this documentary about Iron Man and I was like, these people are superheroes. This is incredible. Like how, how can people do this? And then as I progressed and tried out more sports, and never being that much of a biker, I picked up cycling two, two years ago, maybe, um, and, and other sports, of course, too. Um, I, I was like, okay, maybe I could do this. Maybe if I sign up like a year in advance, I still have time to practice, but I, I never actually did the full distance that I was saying, okay, I'm confident I can do this, like even on the day of the event. But I did realize that when they canceled it, that, I did all the work. It is actually 90% is putting in the effort, is having the discipline for months and months on end, thinking about the different strategies, of course, stressing out also for the event, but dealing with the logistics of such an event. So in the end, I'm like, okay, it is still an Iron Woman mindset that I accomplished, that, that I, I, I obtained. And even in the months before that, that I had to drive me to that point, um, so this is something that I also want to pass on to you to, to think about, maybe there's some goals that you th think that that might be impossible, but if you work towards them step by step, you will be surprised by what you can achieve. And also like I, I strike through the date, uh, 2021, I'm of course going to do it next year <laughs> and I'm going to, I sign up to a bunch of other events in the meantime. Um, but yeah, I, I will share a bunch of other stories um, in terms of what, what drove me and what I believe leads to a growth mindset. And the things that I'm sharing is just examples that worked for me. It doesn't mean that exactly this will work for you, but I hope you can take it as a sense of inspiration. And for me, it is also that work and private mindset are the same thing. You can't you can succeed at, at work if you only like flip a switch and, and turn on that mindset. I think it, it needs to be a holistic thing. Um, so yeah, this is why I will share both strategies that I learned from my professional career, uh, but also private, like what do I do to explore and to extend my mindset every day and challenge my mindset? Um, maybe just a short shout out at this point. Um, to my company, Ericsson, because part of where I am today, I truly believe was because of Ericsson, was because I found this amazing company. Now I'm not saying, of course, stay with one company your entire life and things can happen and you never know, and maybe this might not come up to you, but maybe it can work out. Uh, take, take a look at this company and maybe you even see like similar opportunities in your own company that can drive you and, and make you grow as a person. So. Um, Ericsson is a telecommunications vendor. We have around uh, 102,000 employees worldwide. So we're pretty big actually. Uh, we are in 
or we have customers in 180 countries and, and a similar amount in terms of offices. So we're very, very global in this, where the opportunities also arise and, and those many opportunities because of the very global nature. And the good thing is also that we have jobs and, and it might have sounded scary when I said like, I've been with this company for 12 years, but the reality is I changed my job every maybe one, two, three years because I get bored too. Many people I talk to and, and tell them this, they're like, oh my God, I would get so bored. But if you if you are in, in a place that really encourages giving you opportunities to grow, um, they will also encourage you to explore. And I think uh, for me, I got lucky to actually change jobs within the company because we have such a diverse set of, of skills that, that I needed in all the different kind of jobs. So whenever you wanna grow, I, I like I was just able to to change uh, jobs in that direction. Uh, we have anything from marketing, from HR, from um, of course business development, all types of technology. Like there, there's a really amazing technology you always want to try. Like name it, we probably do it in in some kind of sense. Um, so there were really, really also really good, um, numbers of sales. It's a very healthy company. Um, this uh, translates to. 27 billion US dollar in sales in 2020. So pretty, pretty healthy company. So let's talk, let's talk about why we're here, women in tech. So what is women in tech about, honestly? Um, let's take a look at where we're at today because I think one of the first things what, that we think about when thinking about women in tech is like, oh, we're so challenged, we're not there yet, we're a minority. And yeah, the numbers support it to, to some extent. And let me let me give you some examples. Um, in terms of percentage of women in the tech workforce, this has grown from around 26% in the last three years um, up until 29%. This these are US statistics, by the way. Um, it, it's not it's not good. Uh, McKinsey drove some really interesting studies here on entry level jobs. So when we see in women um, entering the the workforce it's actually pretty even but then as soon as it comes to the first promotion already you see that a lot of women are i want to say skip because i'm not sure what what drives this trend of course it can be whatever reasons but you definitely see that there's a lot less women who are getting that first promotion as compared to men we have 38 percent women first entry level managers um and men 62 percent one thing I found, and this is a McKinsey study, another McKinsey study, um, and, and that I found also very, very shocking, is we have 16% of women in color in the general population in US. So how is it that only 4% are women in color in tech? So th th there's a huge gap that we need to close, absolutely. Um, salaries, pay, I I'll talk about the pay, pay aspect later, but the pay should always be fair when it comes to your male counterparts um, for a woman. So what we see here in statistics for some type of college education in jobs in tech, the women have an average salary in the US of 72,000, while the men have 107,000. This is huge. Um, and I'll, I'll share a little bit in terms of strategies, what, what we do with pay, how to get a, a little bit of better pay, but also um, how much of an importance pay has. Um, and for me personally, the most shocking statistic is on the bottom right corner when it comes to entrepreneurship and how, how women are present in this entrepreneur space. So these are crunch-based statistics. Out of all the startups that they have and um, that won late stage funding, we have only 8% that have has a female as the founding mother, uh, a female male co-funded startup, basically, only 8%. But when we look at women-only startups, we are at 1% of all the late stage funding. And this is shocking. This is shocking. And why is that? Um, we have a lot, a lot of work to do. And I also want to show a little bit these statistics to, to, not, to not be discouraged by them. So the problem is whenever we see these statistics, it yeah, of course, it shows us we still have a lot of work to do. And I encourage everyone. To, to help drive this um, and, and drive these statistics up.
But at the same time, if we always think you are the minority and you are at a disadvantage and the guys anyway is going to get the promotion, then you're not going to succeed. We need to change our mindsets. So we need to think instead of, oh, I'm the minority, that imagine everyone around you wants you to succeed because they want to fix these statistics too. And at the same time, also thinking that when your boss hires you, it is because he wants his team or she wants her team to succeed. When your peers work with you, no, regardless if it's all guys or there's some women representation or all ladies or something else, <laughs> we, are, we are very general neutral here. Um, they all want you to succeed because you're on their team. You are on their team and this team has to be successful or, or wants to be successful. So from that perspective, same thing goes for your, from, for your family or peers or friends. They all want you to succeed. So if you think that first, instead of thinking you are the minority, your chance of succeeding low, much more likely to succeed. And this is part of, of, of obtaining this growth mindset. And this is part of, of obtaining and, and, and sticking and driving your goals to the end. Now, I want you basically to imagine possible. Imagine anything that is possible. And just by, by planting this idea in your mind, you can start working towards it consciously or subconsciously. Like when I was 10 years old and saw a documentary about the Ironman, I never thought I would become an Ironman. Literally, it never occurred in my mind. But there was already to some kind of extent planting the seeds of like, hey, what if I go run maybe 5K? Maybe that is already a big goal. But if I work towards it, and this is how I started running, if I work towards it, maybe I can... I can at least become a load body. And then it went more and more and more from there. Um, I really, I really like this. Imagine possible is actually part of, of a campaign, a newly launched campaign and rebranding effort of my company. And it resonates so much with me. Basically, this is where we are changed into a purpose-driven company saying, um, imagine all the things that could be possible um, by having everything connected that can be connected, coming back to being a telecommunications company. But for me, it is so much more. It is any goal that you can possibly think of. If you can imagine that it is possible, it will be possible for you and you can work towards it. And maybe you don't have to work towards it right away, but it's a start in that direction. Now, um, what does it mean to you, uh, to me personally and, and in my life and how do I adapt it? I like to adapt a growth mindset and this, this type of Iron Woman mindset in every part of my, my, my life because only this way I can also make sure I grow in my career and I challenge the status quo. Um, but it starts with small things, really. It doesn't need to like be, be life-changing, sign up to this huge triathlon or whatever. Like for me, the top left corner <laughs> starts with nails. I, I started doing my own nails. I was so frustrated with like going to salons and getting my nails done and the quality was never what I wanted it to be. So I was like, why, why can I do it myself? What, what's keeping me? And it, it will cost me the same time in the end. So why, I might as well do it myself. Uh, so I ordered stuff from Amazon, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I started doing my own ads, and I'm so happy for it. And, and sometimes I even think it's quite relaxing, honestly, to just disconnect and do this type of work. Um, another thing is also painting. I, I picked up painting uh, some, somewhat recently, and there's a lot of people, when, when I tell them that they're like, oh, I can't paint. I don't think I could paint. <laughs> it started, I think, with a paint night. There's some events like that where they really guide you through, like, piece by piece and all of a sudden the result looks amazing and um, I think it's part of not knowing all the amazing things that you can do until you try them and this is true for painting by following some tutorials you can realize that you're, you're actually good at it and these are some a little bit further advanced examples um, but I think what is important to share here is, is the journey of getting there and just trying and seeing what you can do and maybe you will like the outcome. Um, yeah, so some a bunch of other examples like starting my MBA. I wanted to explore just basically 
um, what are all these managerial tools? I, I came from tech, but some sometimes I, I found myself in a situation where I, when I had to take leadership roles and, and had to take managerial decisions and, and apply some of these business tools that you hear about. And I was like, uh, okay, so, so what is that? Where does it even come from? And I was like, I, I wish I would know the frame that the, the entirety of the tools that exist out there and have a better framework to, to pick from when making managerial decisions. So at some point I was like, hmm, what if I just get another degree? I, I, I got two of them before, so why not a third? What, what's stopping me from it? And I, I was fortunate enough to find a scholarship or also to, to pay for it. And of course, like something to always keep in mind was either one of my examples. Um, and part of the reason why they might not be applicable to all, yes, they, they depending where you are, they require different types of funding or maybe a different type of, of place where you're at. And that's okay. These are examples. So maybe there's something else that, that resonates with you and can kind of trigger you and motivate you. So I did manage to, uh, to finalize my MBA uh, and, and graduate from it um, fairly recently. And it took me working nights. But I was I was happy for doing so, and it also it was a fun thing to do outside my work too, um, and and to grow and invest time in myself because this is what it felt like investing time in myself. There's a lot of um, personal leadership development in it as well. Really good program. Um, a bunch of other things, cooking like Asian cooking. I always saw is so difficult. It turns out when you follow the recipe step by step, you can actually do it um a learning i i i made and now it's it seems easy it's crazy after you you overcome something and learn something that first seems difficult once you learn it you do understand that actually it might not be so hard as as i thought it would be um it might have something to do with like the fear of not knowing but also not, not knowing the exact process but this is an experience i have over and over again whenever i learn something new and uh this is kind of the fun of it. Uh, a huge project that I'm doing, I, I just bought a house. Uh, my partner and I were working together and remodeling it. Part of the motivation was looking at uh, prices for contractors in the pay area. I was like, okay, it's either um, either we do it ourselves or I have to wait a lot longer to, to save up to afford these contractors. So I took the personal executive decision of like okay let's do it and of course uh, consulting and working with my partner who's supporting me so so very very much in in this remodel that we're doing ourselves and we're learning um step by step we have a new problem and we figure it out and and this is kind of also an amazing um growth growth opportunity and and learning how things are done and also sometimes not being afraid to to do something hands-on because especially something i learned is um getting a, a higher position sometimes things seem more abstract so it is really nice to do hands-on things to to offset that a little bit a, a bunch of other examples from from the sporty side of things and um here are some of the runs and training that i've been doing um, fundraising for cancer um, on the bike and again, things I, I never thought I would be doing. And, and here I am snowboarding. I just picked it up last year. I just started last year that I was like, okay, let's try it. It seems scary to, to go down the, the snow uh, from, from a high mountain, but uh, it turned out to be fun. And, and it took took a while. It took a while to, to be comfortable with that. One thing I was always terrified of is backpacking. I was like, who, who does it to themselves? They, they go into nature, and they're so uncomfortable. There's no back bathroom. You, you always feel dirty and there's no showers. Um, you work a lot carrying this huge weight on your shoulder. But it turned out to be once I did it, and I was terrified before, before I went backpacking off the thing. Once I did it um, with a bunch of fellow very inspirational female leaders actually in tech. Um, I was amazed by it. I was like, oh my God, I'm hooked. This is amazing. You get to explore places you can never do otherwise in a car. And you you get to see this type of scenery every single second of your height. It's amazing. So um, 
challenge yourself this is this is absolutely my advice in every every part of your your um life but of course i also want to give some some targeted professional career and uh, share a little bit what stuck to me and what are things i can pass on um that i think really really helps your your career growth as a woman in technology um and this this lady, by the way, on the picture, it's not just like someone on the picture, but she she inspired me to do the Iron Man. Uh, I know her personally. She she's an amazing personality. Um, so so some of the growth mindset strategies at work. Um, one one super super memorable thing that I I try to live by because this is something actually uh, one person from our global talent management team shared to me. Um, and I always remember it as the best career advice that I ever received. It is the willingness to get fired, have the willingness to get fired. It doesn't mean get in front of your boss and ask to get fired, obviously, but it means speak up. Like if, if you never speak up, how else will anyone know what you think? Or maybe it, it's not just that, but also to, to stop for your beliefs. This is, to to challenge things and and a good leader will appreciate being challenged but it also requires you to know your stuff of course you can't just challenge without any foundation and and that is of course an entire different culture that also exists um it is okay even if it happens it, it is okay to make mistakes in in any kind of sense um as long as you take responsibility for it and i think this is a big big um lesson to learn throughout the career if something doesn't work right it is okay to to admit hey this doesn't didn't work right but i learned from this experience this and that because this will show that you are an amazing leader in what you do you are capable of learning otherwise uh, for example if someone sends me a cv and it says like a uh, great experience in this and this and this and this the question is how did they learn that what what type of experience is it um and making mistakes and learning from them and by this gaining experience it is worth so much more because it will always stick with you um and of course in some cases if, if you find yourself not in the right place where you speak up and you do all these things and it still doesn't quite work or seem right sometimes it's okay to move on inside or outside your company of course um there's of course a thing where um especially in tech every now and then we women we found ourselves to be the only female in the room and i had meetings just like 20 guys around me um and that's okay the thing is also that that i like to take away just like with the statistics um is your mindset to it because there is such a thing as projecting too um if you treat yourself like the elephant others in the room others will treat you also like the elephant in the room uh, because you might subconsciously project that as well of course there can be environments where you are no matter what you do treated like the elephant in the room again let's go back to the not the right place move on um kind of lesson here and, and always know other opportunities exist out there um but i found it actually sometimes you can actually embrace being the only woman in the room it, it could also mean that by being different you might be listened to more so it, it can sometimes even work to your advantage but of course it's just strategies to to work with what we are given in the current moment but overall our our goal should always be to change it change the situation where there's so little women that you are the only woman in the room um a word about the money <laughs> i i was i was asked many times like hey why are you applying to this job hey why do you see yourself in five years and my answer was always it sounds fun <laughs> it sounds like a very fun thing to do and i want to go to where it's more fun um where, where i enjoy my life and where i enjoy my work and also for you when you look for a job I can only recommend go for the job if you have a, a choice of like earning, I don't know, a few thousand bucks more or actually enjoying more what you do. Go always for the one that you enjoy for the reason that you would spend eight hours a day at work. That's a lot of time. 
their paycheck comes once a month and there is actually statistics that exist that show when you hit a certain amount which isn't as high as, as you you imagine there are statistics for every country of course uh, please feel free to google it when you hit a certain amount of salary getting a little bit more getting a lot more it will make you happier at some point you just you just basically hit your foundation of what you need to sustain yourself and after that everything is just okay cherries on top <laughs> but at some point the, the the best cherry on top that you can give yourself is enjoying eight hours a day and also your environment your family your friends everyone around you will enjoy being around you when you're a happier person for it but of course in the sense of uh, gender pay gap also um ask for a raise something and and i think some some statistics actually point to the fact that sometimes women don't get that raise because they don't ask for it um regardless of women or men ask for it because it happened to me like i i didn't get it because i didn't ask and as i started asking it happened that that those raises uh raises came uh a word about imposter syndrome because this is something new in the context of um, women not succeeding potentially. I, I just want to say, and I'm not a psychologist, but I want to say to you as advice that everyone is feeling unsure at some point in their life, in their career, about their work, about anything they do. And that's okay. And it, it doesn't necessarily need to make you an imposter. Or, or apply to this syndrome. But if this happens that you feel unsure, let your accomplishments guide you. And also accept that there's no need to be the smartest person in the room. Sometimes it is actually a really good leadership capability to be able to ask for help and to be able to say, oh, I don't, I'm not sure about this right now. Let me go ask the expert and come back to you about this and learn something, of course, in the process. And also for, for a leader to say, I don't know is I believe a great act of strength because we we don't have this enough. And I'd rather know or trust the person that I'm talking to that the things that they do tell me, they really, really know by telling me sometimes they don't know other things. And I think I think it's a really great, great trait. Um, two final ones um, that I think are very good and and things that you can you can work on right now and today is actually first live in the now and one thing and and this comes back to of course not not always needing a five year plan if you have that's great of course but also accept and be flexible and understand that not always does your life plan out the way that that you you thought about it and that's okay i think for me personally and i don't i don't like for me five-year plans but i like to optimize the current situation and i think it's it's good every now and then to reflect what makes you happier right now and if some things don't it's good to work in, in changing them but even when thinking what makes you happy right now this is a question many many people have difficulties or struggle with answering and that's okay because it takes time to realize that to actually sit down and reflect on these and make a change because only when you consciously know what makes you happy and you know what to work towards it will become your constant state um one last thing is find a mentor if there's someone that inspires you go ask them just reach out and you will actually be surprised by the feedback that you receive and it is amazing um, a lot of people like to shy away from, from asking for advice, asking for mentorship, but actually the people being asked to mentor, more often than not, they are the ones who feel, um, of course, who, who want to share their knowledge, but also that do have a positive side effect for themselves, that they are also building their network. You will become their network. Um, and you might actually be in a position where you might help them as well later and there's also this new strategy of like this um this this common this joint mentorship where the mentee mentors the mentor and the mentor mentors the mentee so i think that's actually a really really good strategy as well because everyone seeks 
a reflection and feedback and especially the higher you get if you if you reach out to a mentor and give them feedback they will appreciate you for it because the higher you get the less feedback you receive actually so thank you so so much let me remove that presentation and I look really forward to discussing this with you. I can't wait for your questions. And this is such an important topic for every one of us. We need to speak up more. We need more women in technology and we need more female leaders. Thank you, everyone. Hello, Tatiana. Hey, thank you for joining and uh, having me. Thank you for being here uh, with us in Project Disrupt. And thank you so much for uh, this insightful and valuable presentation. To tell you the truth, personally, I can totally relate because I myself, mm -hmm. I'm a long distance runner since 2014, I ran uh, marathons. So uh, this year was my first year that I said, okay, we're going to, uh, to finish the, the Ironman here in, uh, in Athens, Greece, and uh, nice. there was a COVID incident and uh, got me back, but I have it in my, my next uh, bucket list. So oh I can my uh, God. totally it And to like tell the you the thing. truth, <laughs> exactly. And to tell you the truth, once I pursued uh, sports in my life, I realized that have made me a better person as a personality, as a, as a, as an employee, as a, as everything, they have totally changed my mindset and the way that I, I realize uh, the changes around me and how I can deal with them. You know how I can deal with all the things in business and life and everything. Uh, so, okay. so uh, the connection with your presentation will, was uh, to the point. Uh, let us know if we have uh, any questions for you, but uh, let, let me ask you a question that I have in mind. Uh, how important um, you think that, uh, how important is the environment uh, to, uh, to inspire and develop such a, an iron human, I'd say, not only mm -hmm. iron human or iron man, uh, mindset and development generally? I mean, of course it helps, of course, like I, I, I would lie, like um, if, if I say it, it doesn't matter, I mean, I, I had, I was fortunate that, for example, my, my partner had, had some great sports accomplishment and, and he was also the one who um, took a bold step, for example, to uh, go on a sabbatical to work on himself, to actually invest the time on himself. So he's a great inspiration for me, for example, um, and of course, my, my parents encouraging me and so on. But and, and Ericsson, I mean, they're pretty amazing towards women. I have to, I have to state that. Um, but I have to say, though, in the end, for me, when I train, for example, for the Ironman, I'm on the bike alone. I'm like, and you can relate probably to that too. Uh, I, I run for hours and hours alone. I'm on the bike in the middle of nowhere, like for five hours at a time, sometimes without reception. I'm alone. In, in the end, I think it is you, the person... That, that is experiencing a change and that is working on themselves. And since no one will, will make that change for you and no one will, will give you that mindset um, except for yourself. So from that perspective, I think environment, of course, it, it's important and, and it helps. But if you don't have that environment that does support you in that, it's okay too. And, and you can be the change on your own because you're the one changing. Yeah, self-motivation, surely very important in all changes. And let me see what other questions we have here. Um, okay, um, are uh, companies uh, an important aspect to encourage that, that kind of growth mindset strategies that, uh, that you presented to us? I mean, uh, they're very, uh, it's necessary to have uh, your company Mm -hmm. uh, embraces all this uh, mindset and uh, encourage uh, its employees, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I think what helped me 
a lot actually um, at work. Once I, I started to challenge myself more and more, I would um, share it at work and I would meet more like-minded people. For example, I recently learned that on, on LinkedIn, he posted it, the head of one of our big, big business areas is also an Ironman. He does a half Ironman every half year. And I, I, I'm sorry, I keep relating this about sports all the time. So don't, don't take it. It has to be only sports, but it's any big challenge that you take, of course, right? Um, for me, it just happens to be sports as, as it <laughs> happened for you, luckily. But um, that, that was such an inspiring thing because knowing how much time it takes, I take this leader, and of course I took him serious before, but I take him so much more serious now knowing that he has such a challenging job being such a big and great leader and on the same time making time for this. So I think it opens opens this mindset. It opens a networking opportunity as well. As you learn more, for example, I, I reposted on LinkedIn um, a comment to him like saying, oh, I'm actually impressed and it makes you a much greater leader for it and I'm going to do an Ironman as well. And he actually responded to me too. So this is how you get a response out of a really big leader too, uh, as a side effect. Um, but I think, yeah, it builds a network. It inspires people. On one of the pictures that I showed in the slide is actually a colleague. Um, she is an Ironman. She, she did three Ironmans. I reached out to her and I was like, hey, can you give me advice? Like, what do I do? I've never done this before and you've done this all often. And this is, this is how you build a network and this is how you learn to share and this is how you inspire each other. So absolutely. Um, and once you start sharing, you will learn that people do this too. Um, and I think that was the experience I was making because I thought, oh, okay, it's just work. No one else does this maybe, you know, but uh, this, this helped me grow too and, and understand better that my company is made out of great people. Yeah, that's very important. And from my side, I'd say that uh, indeed sports bring people together, yeah. but uh, on, not only sports, habits, hobbies, and mm -hmm. uh, everything else that um, we might pursue outside the business and work, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I, I would like to thank you very much for being here in BLG Disrupt and invite everyone that is watching right now, if you want to uh, connect uh, with Tatiana, of course, they, they might as well find you in LinkedIn. Yes, Absolutely. Either, either for uh, sports tips uh, or anything uh, related to business. Uh, so thank you once again. And uh, I'm wishing you the best of the records. Thank you so much. And you too. Thank you so much for having me. And please reach out. Please send me a, a message on LinkedIn too. I, I love to hear from you. Okay, of course. And of course, you are always invited to come and, uh, uh, for, for the Greek Ironman or the, the Greek math marathon, the authentic. Absolutely, I would love to. Okay, great. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>